The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that lad whose message loud and clear each Thursday rings into your ear. Hey, Uncle! All right, Costello, Costello, come here. You're all excited. I like me. You're all excited. What? What's the thing you've got there? Huh? It looks like a telegram. Where did you get it? Oh, a fellow in a long green underwear gave it to me. A fellow in a long green underwear? Yeah, he was wearing a Western Union suit. Ah, uh, yes, dummy. That was a <laughs> that was a messenger boy. And that's a telegram. What does it say? It don't say nothing, Abbott. I can't see a thing. Well, you dope. You haven't even opened the envelope. Oh, do you have to open it? Uh, I, I thought you were supposed to peek through this little window in the front. <laughs> Give me that telegram. I'll read it. Hey, hey, look, Costello. What? It's from your hometown. Patterson, New Jersey? Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, boy! Can you imagine? Look, it says, Dear Louis Costello. Oh, yeah. Abbott, look yeah. at the way they spell Louis. What do you mean? L-O-U-S-C. I, uh... <laughs> that, that's my hometown. Quiet, Costello. <laughs> This telegram is from your old grade school in Patterson, public school 15. Oh, boy. Good old P.S. 15. My old alma mattress. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, you mean uh, alma mater. A mattress is something you lie on. I know. I laid around that school for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what do they want with me, Abbott? Well, the telegram goes on to say, uh, let's see now. We are proud of you, Mr. Costello, and the whole school will greatly on- be honored if you would come to Patterson this Saturday night and appear in our annual school play, signed by the principal, J. Soiloff Wallpaper. How do you like that, Abbott? Boy, oh boy, I knew my old school would send for me someday. Sure they would. I was always the hero of my school. I'll never forget Coach Abel Green. What do you mean? And those kids I played with, Michael Varello. What did they those do? Those were the kids. Huh? We had a real team in that. I was even the captain of the tug-of-war team. Wait a minute. What did you do on the tug-of-war team? I was the second jerk from the end. I... <laughs> Yes, yes, but I can't... I don't get that. I don't either. Look, I can't understand why that school would send for you to appear in a play. What do you know about grammar? About what? Uh, do you understand grammar? No, not since she got a new false teeth. No, no. <laughs> Even Grandpa can't understand her. Now, Costello, Costello, I'm talking about dramatic acting. Did you ever do anything dramatic in school? Oh, did I? I used to get up and I used to excite poetry. You did? Get a load of this little gem, which I wrote myself. Let's hear it. And roses are red and violets are purple. Sugar is sweet. And so is maple syrple. Uh, well, <laughs> come on, maple, maple syrple. It rhymes, don't it? Well, what about it? But maple syrple, what is that? You, what is maple syrple? What is maple syrple? Maple syrple is the stuff you put on flannel cakes. Okay, look. <laughs> no, 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 talk sense. Now, if you're going to Patterson, New Jersey, we've got to get down to the railroad station right away. Come okay, on. Okay, come on. <laughs> All right now, Costello, let's get our tickets for Patterson. We've got to find a comfortable place to sleep on the train. Oh, I never have any trouble, Abbott. I got a system. I eat garlic before I get on a train. What has garlic got to do with finding a place to sleep? I just breathe in the conductor's face, and he gives me a wide berth. I, oh, I'll be sensible. Well, here's the ticket window. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, we're going to Patterson. Uh, could you tell us how the trains run? Oh, yes. There's a big black thing that pulls them, and it goes choo-choo and woo! This guy's been drinking too much of that traveler's aid. Hey, look. Look. <laughs> you better let, let me handle this, Costello. I think I better because right. I lost my place. All right, never mind that. Now, look. In order to say... Say, Lou, come here. Go ahead. I, I got it. All right, look, look. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry about a thing. In order to save money, I think we'd better get a couple of upper berths. Oh, but I don't want an upper. I want a lower. But, Costello, do you realize that if you buy a lower, you'll find it's much higher than an upper? Oh, sure. I mean, after all, any... What'd you say? Uh, I, s- <laughs> I said that a lower is higher than an upper. A lower is higher than an upper? Why, certainly. Well, what are they doing? Running the trains upside down? <laughs> of course not. 
the lower is a more desirable berth. Therefore, if you want to go lower, you'll have to go higher. If I want to go lower, I'll have to go higher? Yes. Why should I go higher when I want to go lower? Not, uh, simply because if you want to go lower, you have to go higher. Because the lower is higher than the upper. And the reason the lower is higher than the upper is because the upper is higher up than the lower. Oh, you mean that the upper is lower than the lower yeah. because the lower is higher than the upper. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Costello, I'm trying to tell you that they sell the upper lower than the lower because when you sleep in an upper, you have to get up to go to bed. I have to get up to go to bed? That's right. <laughs> Who's paying for my birth? You are. And there ain't going to be anybody in it but me? No. Then why do I have to get up? Uh, Costello, look, I've already explained it. Unless you go higher for a lower, then you're stuck with an upper. And you'll have to get up when you go to bed. And you'll have to get down when you want to get up. <laughs> Abbott. What? Let me smell your breath. Oh. Hey, friends, would you like to do me a... Well, I was just about to say, do me a favor, but actually, I should say, do yourself a favor. Or maybe do your throat and your taste a flavor. Let them judge for themselves which cigarette best agrees with them. Let them answer the question you have so often asked yourself about... Which cigarette is best for you? Let your throat try Camel's kind, cool mildness. Let your taste sample that rich, full flavor. Because your T-zone, that's T for taste and T for throat, can tell you more about Camel's in one puff than I can in ten programs. C-A-M-E-L-S Camel's, a superb blend of costlier tobaccos. Freddie Rich plays a hit tune of today, but for many of you, it is also a hit of other years. Freddie revives Sweet and Lovely. Here you are, Costello, in good old Patterson, New Jersey. Yeah, Abbott. And here's my old school. Do tell. P.S. 15. As I stand here looking at this old building, I think of the happy days I spent here as a boy. How long did you go to school, Costello? You mean counting kindergarten? Yes. One year. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, come on, let's find the principal's office and see what time we start rehearsing for the school play tonight. Hey, what do you mean? What time we start rehearsing? Not we, me! This is my old school, not yours, Abbott. What do you mean? I'm going to do this play all by myself. I don't need your help. Oh, how can you say that, Costello? Haven't I always given you the best of everything? Why, last, last Sunday, when we had a, a double date, I gave you the best girl. What a slick little number you had. Slick number is right. I bent her back in my arms and her hair slid off. All right, look, look. <laughs> look. Just, just cut that out, Costello. Wait a minute. I think this is the principal's office right here. No, no, no. Not that room. What do you no, mean? No, that room is where they have the art class. What do you mean? That's where I learned to draw, Abbott. You did? I was a wonderful drawer. My kid brother, Sebastian, is in there now. 
He's studying to be a drawer, too. Well, that'll be nice. Just think of it. The Costello brothers, a pair of drawers. Uh... (laughs) Look, never mind that. Where is the principal's office? Oh, I don't quite remember, Abbott. But look, look. Here's my old first grade's room. First grade room? Yeah. eh? Well, why don't you go in and say hello to your old teacher? Oh, I don't think Miss Sashwait would remember me. I wonder if she's as fat as she used to be. Why, was she very fat? Fat. Every time she turned around, she used to erase the back blackboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I said it! All right, all right. Well, go ahead. Open the door and see if she remembers you after all these years. Okay. Boy, will she be surprised to see me. Miss Sashway! Miss Sashway! Yes? Don't you remember me? I'm Lou Costello. Oh, and where were you all day yesterday? <laughs> Yesterday? I haven't been here for 15 years. If you're absent one more day, you'll have to bring a note from your mother. <laughs> Just a minute, Miss Sashway. I'm Lou Costello. Don't you remember how 15 years ago I always used to pester you by raising my hand? Yes. Well? You can go now. <laughs> Gee, Miss Sashwaite. Gee, she's changed. I remember when she used to keep me after school to spank her erasers. All right, look. Come on, Costello. Here's the principal's office right over here. Uh, and you'd better let me talk to him. He's a very brilliant man. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> how do you do, sir? Are you Professor Wallpaper, the principal? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can always tell a Harvard man. <laughs> Professor, I understand you want Costello to appear in your school play tonight. Yeah, just a minute. I, I got the telephone tangled in my yo-yo. <laughs> Uh, now, if you fellas are looking for the rehearsal of the play, it's right in the next room. Oh, all right. C- come on, Costello. Oh, I love you, Millicent, my darling. I love you too, Rodney. Kiss me, my sweet. Oh. Hey, you two, cut that out. Shh, wait a minute. Don't stop them, Costello. That's wonderful acting. They're not acting. That's the janitor and the fourth grade teacher. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Can anybody tell us where they're rehearsing the play, please? Yeah, right to the next room. Just ask for the English teacher. He's in charge. Uh, thanks. Oh, I love you, Millicent, my darling. I love you too, Rodney. Kiss me, my sweet. Hey, Abbott. What? They've been doing that for 15 years. Why don't they get together? Well, she won't marry him when he's drunk, and he won't marry her when he's sober. teacher, <laughs> I'm Said so. Don't tell me that you're teaching in this school, too. Mm, yeah, could be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm devoting my whole life to teaching the little kiddies how to speak perfectly the king's English. <laughs> yes, yes, I went to one of the most famous colleges in England. Eaton? Yeah, Eaton and Drinkham. <laughs> <laughs> I had a wonderful time. <laughs> I was in London once. Yeah. I met a beautiful girl on the street one day. A uh, Piccadilly? I certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly did. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Kitzel, I understand you're directing the school play tonight. Yes, sir, yeah, my friend. You know, my whole family was dramatic coaches. My grandfather was a coach. My father was a coach. My uncle was a coach. Oh, I come from a long line of coaches. And what are you, the caboose? <laughs> well, well, gentlemen, I'll see you tonight at the play. Now I must get back to my pupil. Uh, just a minute, Kitzel. Yeah. Just a minute. Is my kid brother Sebastian in your English class? Is that little Sebastian your brother? <laughs> Woo-hoo! Is he a bright little chappy? You know, he is speaking the best English from the whole school. Just a second, I'll call him. Sebastian! Hello, Sebastian. Hello. I just wanted to tell you how proud I am of you. Professor Kitzel just told me that you're the best English pupil in his whole class. Is that true? Mm, Yeah, could be. Lovely Connie Haynes and a lovely song, together.
laughed at the rain together. Sang love's refrain together. Radio sure is a wonderful triumph of modern science, but as yet we haven't found out how to broadcast the flavor of a cigarette over a microphone. Only your own taste can tell you which cigarette you like best, and only your own throat can tell you which cigarette likes you best. So why not give your T-zone, that's T for throat and T for taste, a chance to judge the cigarette it likes best. Give your taste a chance to try the rich, full flavor of Camel's blend of costlier tobaccos. Give your throat the chance to try Camel's kind, cool mildness. Like millions of smokers, you too may find that your cigarette is... C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel's. Let them tell their own story to your own T-Zone today. Good evening, members of the Parents and Teachers Club of Patterson and all... Dirty, uh, dear little kitty. We have a great surprise for you tonight. One of our former pupils, Lou Costello, has consented to present a play for us. Most of you remember Lou Costello. In his school days, he was the head boy along this block. And let us listen to this blockhead. <laughs> Costello, Costello, the audience is waiting for you. You've just been introduced. Open this door. Sebastian, what are you doing in your brother's makeup and his costume? What is the meaning of this? Louie has disappeared. Disappeared? Mm-hmm. But don't worry, Uncle Bud. What do you mean? I'm, I'm going out on the stage and I'm going to take his place. And the audience will never know the difference. I put on this big, big putty nose that I got and, and I put on my nose. This big putty nose. But Sebastian, uh, you've got the putty down over the end of your nose. How are you going to smell? All right, unless they turn on the heat. Uh, look, look, Sebastian... <laughs> What are you going to do when you get out on that stage? Well, I'm going to tell them a story about Romeo and Juliet. And it was written by William Shakespeare, a very great ether. Ether? Mm-hmm. You mean author. Ether puts people asleep. That's what this story's going to do. <laughs> well, uh, all right, as long as Lou isn't here, I, I, I suppose you'll have to do it. Come on, hurry up. The curtain's going up. Come on, there you are. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to tell you the story of Romeo and Juliet. Now, I don't want any interruptions from you, Uncle go, Abbott. Go ahead, let's My hear the story. My big brother told me how you interrupt him. Oh, well, go ahead. But don't interrupt me. Tell that story. Don't give me that. Go Just ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Me. I lost my place like my big brother. Now, I am, I'm not kidding. Once upon a time, there was a fellow named Romeo. Romeo? What did this Romeo look like? Got out of that one. Well, all right. What did he look like? Huh? What did he look like? Well, he, he was about... How do I know what he looked like? I never met the guy. Then why do you tell stories about people you don't even know? Nobody knows Romeo. He's just a guy in the story. He 
Fancy, he's an imaginary character. Oh, you mean he's just a person in fancy. In fancy? In fancy what? In fancy nothing. That's a good way to catch gold. <laughs> now, look, Uncle Bud, if you just shut up, I'll tell a story. All right, go ahead. I won't say any more. Okay. All right, go Once ahead. Once upon a time, there was a fellow named Romeo, and he was his father's only son. Well, that's right. He was his father's heir. His what? His father's heir. His father didn't have any hair. <laughs> he was bald-headed. All right, go ahead. Now, don't interrupt me. All right, go ahead. Now, there's a girl in the story, and her name is Juliet. And her father was given a big party, you know, to kind of, uh, sort of, shove her into society. Oh, yeah, you mean she was uh, ha- making her debut. I don't know if it was a debut or her night view. <laughs> All I know, it was her first party, and a lot of people was invited to see her. And stuff. No, I, and I, things. Uh, well, you see, the, the folks were coming in uh, to her coming out party. How can you come in to come out? She was inside already. Naturally, she had to come in to come out. What did she want to come out for? She was inside. This wasn't an outdoor affair. All right, all right. All... This was inside. Uh, I know that. You told me that. All right. Well, if people are going to come in to come out, there's no use of going out to come in. All right. Uh... Why don't they stay home? Look, Sebastian, you don't understand. Why don't you stay home? Look, you don't understand, I Sebastian. Stay home now, listen, you. please. You want me to tell your big brother on you? Anybody got lozenges? Look, listen, please. Look. The party brings her out. The party brings her out? That's right. Why should the party bring her out? What did the little girl do? No, 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 no. The party didn't even start. Some guy right away wants to drag her out. No, you don't understand. Why don't they leave the little kid alone? Now, 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 Sebastian. Maybe she wasn't drinking. But, cuz... Listen, Sebastian. Maybe she had one pop. Now, Sebastian. Maybe after all, the kid is okay. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Lost again. All right, go on with the story. Well, look. Look, wasn't the... Uh... <laughs> Look, wasn't Romeo invited to this party? Talk longer! Look, wasn't Romeo invited to this party is what I want to know, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, sure, oh, sure. That... No, you see, Juliet's father... Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Juliet's father... <laughs> Ju- I need him! Now, come on, Sebastian. Ju- Juliet's father didn't like Romeo, yeah. so he had to put on a mask, and he borrowed another guy's clothes, and he went away. Oh, Romeo went in disguise. Yeah. In this guy's clothes! I see, all right, all right, I see. You see, Uncle Bud, Romeo and Juliet's fathers was enemies, and they was fighting for 15 years. They, they didn't like each other. Yeah. Uh, which family uh, brought on the feud? They both brought on the feud, but Romeo wouldn't need it. He was lovesick. He kept getting thin and pale. Oh, I see. He looked wan. Oh, yeah. He... What did you say? I said, he looked one. Don't you know what one is? Yeah, one is the number before two. No, 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 no. One, two, a part of my shit. No, 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 no. One means picket. Romeo was picket. Oh, sure. He was picket through the keyhole at Juliet. Now, Sebastian. <laughs> well, if I was there, I'd have picked it out of her uh, myself. Uh, Sebastian, will you please go on with the play? Well, anyway, every night Juliet used to sit on the balcony. Why did she sit in the balcony? Because she couldn't afford a seat in the orchestra. Sure. All right, all right. And she liked to sit in the balcony. All right, now, don't argue. Up there she could smoke. Oh, yeah, 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 I understand. Put her feet on the rail. Yes, yes, go on, go ahead. So far, so good. Go ahead. One night, I hope I can hold out. All One right. night, Juliet dropped her handkerchief and Romeo picked it up and handed it to her. And uh, what did uh, Juliet do when Romeo handed her the handkerchief? Uh, she'd done like anybody. Else. What? 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 Just what? Well, you know what I Wait, mean. Do she... you know the story, don't you? Oh, yes, yeah, she... Well, what did Juliet do when Romeo handed her the handkerchief? You know, like they... Always... What did she do? She wiped her nose! All right, now, 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 now. Gee, did you have to make me say well, that? Well, all right, never mind. I mean, it's your line. All right, look, but look, Sebastian, as I remember the story, Romeo had a rival and they fought a duel with lances. Now, what I can't understand is why did the other fella kick Romeo when Romeo dropped his lance? Because he caught Romeo with his lance down. Uh, uh, look, look, that's enough, Sebastian. Stop the play. Stop it. I say, ladies and gentlemen, the play is over. Bring down the curtain. Hey, hey, hey. What's the idea of stopping the play, Uncle Bud? Sebastian, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Not only have you disgraced your brother Lou, but you stand there and make a monkey out of a great masterpiece. You ridicule Romeo and Juliet, the greatest love story of all time, and you deliberately insult the name of William Shakespeare. Why do you do these wicked things? Oh, I'm a bad boy! Yeah, I'll say you're a bad boy. Oh, I'm the kind of kid my mother won't let me associate with. Uh, You certainly are. (laughs) Now, come here. Now, where is your brother Lou? 
I think he might be in the fourth grade classroom, Uncle Bud. What makes you think that? Because I locked him in there before the show. Sebastian, unlock that door and let your brother out. He's probably in there crying his eyes out because he missed the play. Go on, open that door. Okay, Uncle Bud. Go ahead. I love you, Millicent, my darling. And I love you too, Costello. Kiss me, my sweet. Costello. Costello. What are you doing making love with a fourth grade teacher? You know she's the janitor's girl. You're telling me, Abbott. And I'm the new janitor. But, but... <laughs> but you missed the whole play. Oh, don't worry, Abbott. Millicent and I are going to put on another play tomorrow night. Another play? Yeah, and I'm calling it The Girl Who Eloped with the New Janitor or Gone with the Window Cleaner. I love you, Costello, my sweet. I love you too, Millicent, my sweet. Oh, he's a bad boy! <laughs> Adam and Costello will be back in a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week, tonight we salute Technical Sergeant George James H. Logan of Luling, Texas, who is one of only two men in this war to receive both the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Distinguished Service Cross. In your honor, Sergeant James M. Logan, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Each of the three Camel Radio shows honors a Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the Camel caravans traveling from camp to camp have thanked audiences of more than 4 million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore. Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And before we hear from the boys, I'd like to say the Merchant Marine needs more men to man the supply lines to victory. And to eligible men, it offers not only a well-paid and worthy present, but a splendid future. In six months' time now, you can make the progress it would have taken you three years to make before Pearl Harbor. Get all the facts. Go to any United States Employment Service office or wire collect to the United States Merchant Marine, Washington, D.C. And now, here are Bud and Lou Costello with a final word. Thanks, Ken. But it's getting a little late, so all we'll have time to say is just good night, folks. And good night to everybody. Good night to... bye, Bonds. Bye, Bonds. Good, good night, night, folks. Good night everybody in Patterson, New Jersey. Good night, neighbors. Good night, neighbors. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, try camels on your throat and your taste. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. If you are a hermit living in some lonely cave, don't listen to this. Because you're one of the few men in the world who can pack his pipe with any old tobacco he pleases and get away with it. But if you want your pipe to make a hit with people around you as well as yourself, then load up with Prince Albert. That wonderful fragrance, that aged-in-the-wood aroma, gives your pipe real pipe appeal to other folks as well as yourself. Besides that fragrance, Prince Albert has a rich, full-bodied, yet mild flavor. It's no bite treated for tongue gentleness. It's crimp cut to pack, draw, and burn perfectly. And what a bargain. Just about 50 pipefuls in one regular two-ounce package. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the world. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you a pleasant good night.